Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you have seen my previous videos which were on the reproduction in organisms. Also, I have solved the NCRT exercises completely of that chapter. If you have not seen them yet, then please go and uh, see them because I have given a very detailed explanation in a very easy way. And uh, so in this video, I would be discussing about the sexual reproduction in flowering plants, which is your second chapter of the NCRT textbook. And in this video, I would be talking only about the male reproductive organs. Okay, so let's start. So here you can see a mature flower, which consists of both male and female reproductive organs. So this is a bisexual flower as it is having both the male and female reproductive organs in one flower. Unisexual flowers are those flowers which have the organs separately, opposite organs on separate flowers or on different plants. Alright, so here you can see that this is the pistil which is the female reproductive part. This is the pistil. Okay, and this is the stamen. This one is the stamen which is the male reproductive part. So you must know what is the uh, male reproductive part and what is the female reproductive part. Though a male reproductive part is known as androsium. Okay, and the female reproductive part is known as gynosium. Alright, so today we would be discussing only about the male reproductive part. So please focus on this part. It is having a filament which consists of anthers on its tip. Okay, and the anthers consist pollen grains inside them or the microsporangia which develop into the pollen grains further. Alright, and these are the other uh, morphological features of the flower which consist of petal, sepal which, is, which are a part of perianth and the pedicle, nectary, floral axis. These all are the morphological physical features of the plant. So before starting, I uh, want you to know that the events of sexual reproduction are divided into pre-fertilization during which the reproductive organs are preparing themselves for the reproduction for the fertilization process they are preparing their gametes then comes the fertilization when the gametes are coming together and fusing to form the zygote and during the post fertilization process the zygote is developing into a embryo and properly whatever the development uh, events are occurring we will talk about them in the future videos now we will talk about the male reproductive organs which are known as androsium the male reproductive part is known as androsium and it consists of stamen anthers microsporangia and pollen sac so this is a, a proper structure of a, a, a stamen which consists of anther on its tip now anther is a bilobed structure it consists of two lobes one is this one second one is this one and if we cut an anther transversely like this then we could see this it is a uh, it is having two theca this is one theca and this is other theca so two theca are present in it and inside those theca are present four microsporangia this is the first one this is the second one third and this is the fourth one these microsporangia are having longitudinally pollen sacs present inside them so pollen sac are present inside the microsporangia longitudinally and inside the pollen sac are present the pollen grains which are these red bead like structures. Alright, now microsporangia is a, uh, having a circular structure and is covered by four layers. So these four layers are epidermis and endothesium. These both have the uh, protection purpose. Their purpose is protection. They are protecting the microsporangium. Middle layer consists of sporogenous tissue. These sporogenous tissue are microspore mother cell. Okay, they are potential pollen which will develop into the pollen grains. Potential pollen is why they are called because they have potential in the pollen grain. Now, what is the tapetum? What is the work of microsporangia? Ko nourish karna. माइक्रोस्पोरेंजियम जो प्रेजेंट हैं जो कि आगे जाके पॉलिन ग्रेन्स में डेवलप होंगी उनको नरिशमेंट देने का काम है टेपटम का ऑलराइट एंड दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द माइक्रोस्पोरेंजियम जिसके अंदर एपिडर्मिस है एंडोथीशियम है स्पोरोजीनस टिश्यू है और ये टेपटम है ओके सो हमने इनका फंक्शन पढ़ लिया है पहले 
और यहाँ पे देखते हैं जो रेड स्ट्रक्चर्स हैं ये रेड सेल्स हैं ये माइक्रोस्पोर मदर मदर सेल्स हैं जो कि स्पोरोजीनस टिश्यू के अंदर प्रेजेंट है ये माइक्रोस्पोर मदर सेल्स क्या करेंगी मियोसिस अंडर को करेंगी हमने देखा था पहली वाली वीडियोस में कि जो भी गैमिट मदर सेल है जो भी गैमिट मदर सेल होगी वो गैमिट फॉर्म करने के लिए रिडक्शनल डिविजन करेगी जिसको बोलते हैं मियोसिस एंड इट विल फॉर्म हियर इट विल फॉर्म अ माइक्रोस्पोर टेट्राड दिस इज अ माइक्रोस्पोर टेट्राड Now one of the microspore from this tetrad, we take it here. It will undergo mitosis and form vegetative cell and generative cell. Okay. Pollen grain के बारे में बात करते हैं हम तो pollen grain का spherical structure होता है और 20 to 25 micrometers उसका diameter होता है. And it is surrounded by two layers, exine and intine. Exine is a thick outer layer and it is made up of a chemical known as poropollenin. which is a very um, ha, uh, tough uh, chemical you can say it is forming a very tough sheet around the pollen grain so that it is uh, capable of surviving in harsh conditions okay harshest of the conditions and this poropollenin this covering of poropollenin is having a uh, opening which is known as germ pore and germ pore is the opening from where the pollen grain will be germinating when it reaches the female reproductive part called stigma which is a sticky place where the pollen grain will go and stick and from there it will germinate through the style and reach the ovary and will deposit the male gametes the inner layer is the intine which is a thick one and it is made of cellulose and pectin so this is basically the intine and outer layer is the exine and it is having a germ pore this is the suppose this is the germ pore so this uh, you can see the green spiky structure is of the sporopollenin here yellow structure this spiky structure is of the sporopollenin now after the pollen grains mature they uh, are having two cells vegetative and generative cells we have seen the microspore or the pollen grain is also known as the microspore now this microspore after mitosis after mitosis will uh, have vegetative and generative cell vegetative cell is bigger have abundant food reserve and has an irregular nucleus whereas the generative cell is small spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm in which its nucleus is floating so here you can see that this is the microspore mother cell which is diploid it will undergo meiosis and form a microspore tetrad which will be having haploid cells and one of the microspore will undergo a mitosis and will form a vegetative cell and a generative cell so this is the generative cell and this is the vegetative cell now the generative cell will undergo mitosis again and will form two male gametes which are the sperm cells so some of the pollen grains are shed at this two cell stage and some are shed at three cell stage if the pollen grain is shed at two cell stage the mitosis will occur when it will germinate and will be uh, forming a pollen tube through the stick uh, style okay at that time it will uh, have the mitosis and will form the male gametes now the pollen grains can remain viable for different periods of time depending upon their environment the temperature and humidity and in most of the species especially the extinct also but today these days mostly the pollen grains of the plants are being uh, preserved so that uh, if the species is going extinct then the pollen grains can be germinated and can uh, be used to increase the number of that species so pollen grains are being stored in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree celsius and this type of um, preservation technique allows the pollen grains to stay viable for thousands of years okay so i hope i'm clear about the male reproductive organ and the process of uh, pollen grain production and how the microsporogenesis is happening so uh, if you like this video then please hit the like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon because i would be posting videos every day and if you have any doubt regarding any video on my channel you are free to mention your doubts in your comment and also you can mail me at biology@gmail.com i have mentioned my mail in the description box and please do subscribe to my channel like and share it with your friends it would mean a lot to me thank you very much